Hey, welcome back to the channel, Bass Brothers Fishing. Naeem here. Super excited about the video today because finally, finally, finally gonna reveal the low 1436 build I did. And this is a build that I've spent over a year doing. Now, I didn't work on it consistently. I had a lot going on, so I appreciate you guys' patience. I started this over a year ago, and this is a boat that I picked up on Facebook Marketplace just on a whim, found it for a really good deal and said, why not get it, mod it, and I'm actually gonna sell this boat. Truly appreciate everyone who followed this build, even though it took a really long time, but multiple things happening at once. I wasn't able to focus on one thing only, which was this boat, but we finally got it done. I wanna give a shout out to my family, of course. You know, it takes a lot of hours away. Shout out to my brother as well for coming out and helping me wrap this boat up. And my sons, I got, I got the family involved on this one at some point because just competing priorities were in place. Anyway, I'm very happy that I was able to do it over time and do it gradually because I was able to change up things. I was able to just take my time and get it exactly how I wanted it. This initially started out as a budget build and didn't quite end as a budget build in the end. They never do, they never ever do. But I wanted to maintain a certain level of cost knowing that I'm gonna sell the boat but still have it look super dope in the end and be very durable. Use all marine grade products, but hey, I'm not gonna keep talking about it. So here it is guys, low 1436 flat bottom. This is a 2011, but man, you would never know that this boat is over 10 years old. This is my first John Boat paint job and I had to strip off all the old paint. Link at the top of the screen of that video, what a video and experience that was. I wanted to paint a boat myself and see exactly what that's like. And I actually rolled it and it turned out absolutely awesome. Three coats of marine grade paint on this boat. So let's get into some of the details of it. I installed the Minn Kota Edge on here. I lucked up and got this on Facebook Marketplace as well. And this motor is in tip top shape. <laughs> so I, I jumped on it. I bought it within an hour of seeing it. Shout out to the guys that sold it to me, some local guys in the DMV area. It's installed on the trolling motor mount and that's from TV Nation. Secured down in the back through the deck and through some framing underneath. And with this mount, you can actually just cut it off right at the front. So it's adjustable to the front of your boat. This is a 45 pound thrust trolling motor, which is a perfect pair for this boat. Also allows for a little bit of storage right under here if you wanna slide a tackle box or something under there, your cell phone, whatever. Uh, you can utilize that space as well. Again, 16 ounce marine grade carpet, very, very comfortable. And this came, it looks absolutely awesome. I believe this is a midnight color. Got this off of Amazon and I will have all these links in the description below as always. So you don't have to rack your brain trying to figure out where to get this stuff. It'll all be there for your convenience. Reset tray is also from TV Nation. Got the port right here. So if you ever have to remove the trolling motor, you don't have to cut wires to do that. Just unplug it from the port right there and this is the perfect height for a long day of fishing pedestal seat mount mounted to the top of the hatch is a technique i did and this is done to save space especially if you have a smaller boat this is a 14 footer so it made sense in order to have a hatch and a seat mount to install it right here super solid it's reinforced underneath just like i have done in previous build i've got i believe this is maybe a half inch of plywood underneath along with a 0.090 sheeting aluminum, all bolted down, six bolts right there, super solid. While we're talking about hatches, let's go ahead and open them up. This build ended up having eight hatches in total, and they actually laid out pretty well to where it's not like overbearing or anything like that. They're spread out and they all serve a purpose. I went with an open floor concept underneath here. So this is one big wide open space underneath the front deck. I forgot to mention the tray from TV Nation is watertight. There's a drain tube right underneath, drains right down underneath the subfloor of the boat and out the back. So you can access underneath from this side. Maybe you have something long you wanna put along the side of the boat, or you can use the main hatch under the front deck. And this is a pretty big hatch opening right here to access the rest. So this boat is small enough to where from this hatch alone, you can reach over anywhere from that side to this side. I didn't strut all the hatches. This one is strutted. Some of the hatches really didn't make sense to actually put a strut on it. And it, it would even restrict some of the usability of the hatch, this being one of them. To me, I like to be able to tilt it back a little bit further versus having it like this. And then you're a little bit more restricted on use. All of them have stainless steel hinges. 
two different type of hinges on this boat. This is an offset hinge. This is the first time I'm using this type of hinge and I did it to accommodate space gapping on the carpet. Shout out to Nate at TV Nation Outdoors for putting me onto that hinge. First time using it, absolutely turned out awesome. This is the type of hinge that gets screwed into the face of the hatch lid and slides underneath the decking and then screwed down in. So super, super solid and it didn't compromise the gapping that I needed for the carpet. This is a combo hatch used for battery storage as well as any gear you have or tackle can be stored in here as well. Two battery system on this boat for the 12 volt trolling motor only requires one 12 volt battery and that's this battery right here. Second battery controls all of the electronics on the boat. Everything is installed with marine grade wiring. We've got eight gauge marine grade wire going from battery to the fuse box right over there. I've got my trolling motor 50 amp breaker installed right underneath easy to access if it ever trips you can reset it easily right here and again open concept no hatch walls this hatch is from sidewall to sidewall inside the boat giving you more storage capabilities if you ever need to service the batteries they're right here super easy to get to and just put a little strap on here and they're anchored down right down there it's probably really hard to see that try to give you the best shot possible I was able to manage a breaker strictly for the batteries right here. 50 amp breaker right underneath the track of the hatch. Forgot to mention the EVA foam I use off of Amazon for the subfloor. I really like this stuff. It's super strong. I've only used it on an interior of a boat. I haven't used it for any decking yet. So I can definitely vouch for how it holds up internally. So I tend to use this type of foam for anything inside the boat. So I've got it completely underneath all the way up from front to the middle bench right here and also in the battery compartment. Now more hatches, twin hatches in the center of the boat. Both are strutted. If you notice I've got EVA foam in here as well, different color. This is actually some foam sheeting that I had uh, left over from a different build and it fit right in and it matches. I like the gray tones of this boat. I didn't mention the actual color of the boat is a light gray color. Not sure how it's turning out on the camera and I did lose my sunlight a little bit, but the whole different tones of gray and black on this boat looks totally awesome. Plenty of storage from the center of the boat on both sides. The storage opens up all the way underneath to the side of the boat. Again, reaching in full access. Onboard charger installed in this side. It's a two bank charger, Knuckle Genius. One thing I really like about these chargers is it charges a variety of different types of batteries. So if you have lead batteries right now, get this. And if you ever upgrade to lithium, you don't have to buy a new charger. Just press the button and switch over to lithium mode. And I believe it does AGM batteries as well. So really good chargers, no cool genius. Install it right there. Charges the batteries up pretty quick. And it also is a battery maintainer after they're charged. All right, so let's get on to the rear deck. I've got three hatches in the rear deck, all different purpose. This one right here is a small hatch. This is to access the live well system. I went with side ports because I wanted to keep the rear open and usable. That's why I have a dedicated hatch right here for accessibility and convenience. My two live oil motors, my pump in and recirc pump out are right here. If you ever need to access and do any kind of maintenance, you can very easily. These motor heads pop off in case you need to change the motor out. You don't have to remove the plumbing. That's what I love about these Tsunami. This is a T500 series. All the wire management is done, zip tied and wire loomed. Keep it nice and clean. Got my negative bus bar back here. So all negative leads coming from the rear of the boat is connected back here so I can have the ability to just manage my cables running one negative wire to the negative bus on the fuse box bus bar combo right there. And you do have a little bit of storage space in here. You know, when we have boats, we tend to store stuff everywhere. So you do have a little bit of storage in here as well if you want. Next up, we've got the live well. This is a 14 gallon tote. This is a DIY live well. Love how this came out. Got the drain out right here. Got your research port right there with a strainer on it. I'm gonna drop the camera down in the live well so you can see, got the flow right head right there. This is a pump in and a research all in one. Flow right is the best of the best. This is the type of stuff you see in bass boats. So very happy to have it in this build. On the outside of the boat, here's your pump in, also fitted with a strainer. And here's your pump out. And the way I install this, it's in there and it's in 
in here tight. It is not coming out. It doesn't shift. It doesn't bow, doesn't bend. And for this, I had to go with a stainless steel cabinet cable right here to hold the lid in place, hold it open at a certain angle. There just simply wasn't any room to put a strut on this hatch. So I, I love it. You know, DIY culture, you figure it out. So pretty big live well in here and it does have a light in case you want to peep in on the fish. Last but not least, we've got our rear hatch. This is a three sided hatch. So it opens up at the rear of the boat, giving way for the motor and ventilation for your gas motor if you're running a gas motor on this boat. Again, open concept underneath giving you maximum storage ability for whatever you need to put back here. Here's the drain tube for the live well. So draining out the live well is simple. Pull the plug, drain it right out the scupper plug right here, right out the back of the boat. Got my bilge pump attached to the transom support. 600 gallon per hour bilge pump, more than enough for this size boat. Having the bilge pump right here is super simple to access it. If you ever need to do any maintenance to it, you can get to it with ease. And if you haven't seen the playlist on this boat, modding this thing out, link at the top of the screen right now. Check it out, guys. That series goes from start to finish, from stripping down all the paint, repainting this boat, all the way to finishing it up right here. On the rear transom, Install this transom support right here, capping off the transom, reinforcing it for your outboard motor. That also from TB Nation. If you go to tbnation.net, I'm telling you these guys have everything you need to build out your John boat. And when you go on there at checkout, use our code BBF5 for 5% off your entire order. Appreciate everyone who does use our codes and supports our channel. And right here is the rear nav light. This will take a two pin rear navigation light. Got the Mercury 99 on this boat, which just looks, look how it all goes together. You've got the black on black, pretty, pretty outfit. Got the Mercury 99, actually gonna run this today and see how it runs this boat. I know how it runs my 1448. So I'm just gonna do a little comparison out of curiosity to see how it pushes this along versus my 1448. As we move down to the middle of the boat, the side panel is aluminum sheeting. I forget the, I think this is 0.063 right here. Painted, riveted in, came out absolutely nice. And I've got the control panel down here with all my electronics along with it. Got my main master switch. Got my six rocker panel right there and my fuse box bus bar combo. Went with a six, which that fit the electronics that I do have on this boat. And you've got your port and this is for charging. Just a one plug system, charges all the batteries one time. Got my voltmeter and it's got a USB charger on it. I've got the pump in for the live well on the switch panel and I've got everything else on this live well timer right here. Really cool to have. I wasn't initially going to put this on the boat but I figured it'd be really nice to have whoever eventually gets this boat will love that feature. Front of the boat is my nav light. Very bright. I actually really like this thing. Tucked away a blue deck light right underneath it. Keep it hidden. But I tell you what, when you light this thing up at night, it looks absolutely awesome. You've got very bright nav lights on the front. All the hatches light up very nicely, making it very visible. Went with white lights for all the hatches. Courtesy light lights up the center of the boat. Even have lights if you ever need to service your pumps doing any night fishing, it's there for you. Got a spotlight inside the live well as well if you wanna peek in on the fish. And super cool blue deck lights at the front of the boat and two at the rear. Appreciate everyone who came along for this journey build as well. It was something and man, she turned out absolutely beautiful. I think I covered everything on this build. Again, appreciate everyone who follows along and watches these videos and leaving comments and engaging and leaving likes on these videos. A lot of this is to really encourage people to go out there. You can do this yourself. This takes time and it takes patience and it does take money. You know, DIY is what it is but you will sink some money in a DIY project as well because everything is custom. Everything is absolutely custom from the little screws you buy to the wood, to the aluminum, I mean, you name it. But again, appreciate everyone that watches these videos, tunes in, and is a part of these builds. Like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, apologies for taking so long to finish this. This boat actually sat for five months after I finished it. And the reason being is I took on another build immediately after that. That's right, guys. I did a Tracker Pro 17. This is a 1994 30-year-old boat that I had to completely rehab. I had to tear it all down, 
and build it back up. Everything from gutting out all the aluminum fittings, stripping off all the carpet, all the decking, cleaning it, scrubbing it, sanding it, painting, fabrications, and then building everything back up. What an awesome build and experience that was. And that one is done as well, guys. So when I say I've been super busy, that's what's been going on. So I appreciate you guys hanging on. That build will post on the channel soon enough and a lot of firsts on that build. Hopefully that build will help folks out as well because it's one thing to mod a boat. It's another to rehab a boat. With that being said, guys, I'm gonna get this baby out on the water. I'm gonna test it out. I'm in Virginia today and I want to actually catch a bass, turn on the live roll, test out everything, and have some fun on this boat. I am going to sell it, so if you're interested in buying this boat, hit me up, email me. Don't do it in the comments. I'm not going to put out details of the sale in the comment section. Email me or direct message me through Facebook or Instagram, and let's get this thing in your hands all right whoever gets this is going to be a lucky person because this is basically a brand new boat we're trying to get to 20k this year so if you haven't subscribed yet and you watch our videos especially if you watch our videos because the majority of our viewers are not subscribers kindly hit that subscribe button we'll truly appreciate it and leave a like on this video that's it hope you guys enjoyed this build i enjoyed bringing it to you another one in the books on to the next one we'll see you on the next video